So good morning everyone. So my name is Richard Lawrence from Cubal. So thank you for joining us today in the uh, machine learning and AI uh, theater. Um, we've got about 20 minutes where we're going to talk about um, the partnership that was recently announced with uh, Snowflake. Um, I have a co-presenter here, uh, Peter, is going to talk to you about the, uh, the value that Snowflake brings to this and I'm going to talk about uh, the Cubal piece. So, so thank you for your time. Um, We'd like to say, if you'd like to ask questions, um, we have quite a tight uh, amount of time, but please feel free to, to ask questions as we go. Um, as you may have noticed, uh, strategically, uh, the Snowflake booth is just outside and the Cubal booth is just outside as well. So if we don't get time to answer all of your questions uh, in the session, um, please feel free to come and talk to us. Um, you may have seen that Matt is giving out our, our data platform book. Um, so it's a really good read, actually. So this was written by our two founders. Um, these were the gentlemen that built the data platform at Facebook. And it tells a really good story of the challenges they found at Facebook back in 2007, uh, how they built the data platform for Facebook to allow all of the employees at Facebook to use data uh, to make decisions, which back in 2007 was a pretty, a pretty tough thing to do. Um, Along the way, they did a lot of work and they co-authored Apache Hive. Uh, so they started to create the tools to be able to make data uh, and analytics and data science accessible to more business users. So it's a really good read, actually. Um, we do have a PDF copy as well if you don't want to uh, carry a book around with you for the rest of the, of the conference. So just to explain my background, so I've been in data pretty much my whole career. So I started in kind of ETL and business uh, analytics, and I've also done some time in the database space, in the NoSQL space. Um, data is obviously critical to, to what we're doing today, and hence why we have such a big uh, conference. Um, so I'll let Peter introduce himself. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, uh, Richard. Uh, so my name is Peter Jensen uh, from the Netherlands. Um, uh, currently supporting Snowflake. Um, I, I just learned that my background is very similar to Richard's uh, from, the, from the data integration, ETL space, business intelligence, uh, way, way back when it was called the decision support systems, you know, gray haired guy talking. Um, and, and like I said, currently uh, the, the move from bringing the data into the cloud uh, arena was, uh, was almost, almost natural to me. Uh, which uh, has led me to uh, to the support of Snowflake, where we are, uh, where we are today, and of course, uh, it's very good to have a database that uh, can contain all your data. But the key thing is, of course, the combination of the products uh, that can help you bring value from that data. So it's probably worth just setting the scene in terms of where the partnership uh, came from. So we're going to start off by talking a little bit about what Cubol does, then we're going to talk about what Snowflake does, and then we're going to talk you through um, three of the use cases that we see uh, customers using in this area. Um, and the partnership came from uh, customer demand. Um, so a number of existing customers of uh, Cubol and a number of existing customers of Snowflake realized there was value in terms of bringing the two technologies together. And like I said, we'll talk you through some, uh, some examples. Um, but I guess overall, what we're trying to do is make uh, data more valuable to your organization. Uh, make sure that your business analysts and your data scientists can actually get access to more data, be using that data uh, uh, more simply, and actually producing more results with the data. So we'll just talk you through some customer examples and kind of explain the, uh, the partnership. Um, what we're now doing is working very closely uh, on the ground. Um, so Cubal has an office here in London, Snowflake has an office here in London. So we're engaging directly with, uh, with customers where they see value in us working together. So just in terms of explaining the problem that Cubal uh, solves, um, as I've said, we're seeing more and more people are realizing how critical data is to their business decision-making process. And Many companies today are trying to drive every business decision with data. And, and it, it, it makes sense. It seems like a, a way to uh, get more value. So if you're a retailer, for example, you want to have personalization. You want to have a 360 view of, of your customer. So data is becoming more and more important. Um, 
So what you can see along the top here is more and more users want access to data, more and more users want some type of self-service. Um, there are more uh, use cases, there are more data scientists, there are more data analysts, there are more tools out there, the, the tableaus and the microstrategies of this world. So there is much demand at the top for growing data requirements. Um, the problem is the, the guys uh, down here towards the bottom, the kind of data engineering, data ops teams, they're under more and more pressure to deliver to the users. And we start to see a problem here in terms of the ratio because, you know, in, in a good company, um, one data ops, data admin, data infrastructure person may be able to support, you know, eight to ten uh, users, eight to ten data scientists or uh, data analysts, which might work when you've only got you know, a handful of users at the top. But obviously, as the number of users grow, what you can't do is keep manually uh, throwing people at this problem. You can't keep manually uh, introducing more people. You can't have manual processes. You need to try and automate that as much as possible. And it's a pretty, it's a pretty straightforward area that you're going to see uh, a bottleneck developing. So what a lot of our customers are trying to do is they're trying to encourage more data science use cases, data analytics use cases at the top, allow the people at the top to really focus on their data and allow them to not worry about the infrastructure underneath. But if you're going to manage that infrastructure, particularly in the cloud where you've got the option to uh, have a lot more capacity and to scale up and scale down, clearly you need to put an automation layer out there because as we've seen, you know, the, these people down here, data engineering people, are much in demand and there just isn't enough of them to go around. So what Kubel offers is a platform to both provide um, uh, capabilities to the, to the top line, to the data scientists and data analysts, but also help to manage the data infrastructure. So help to make the data engineering, the data ops guys much more uh, productive. So Peter? And of course, the amount of data that, that needs to be managed is growing and growing and growing and growing. And probably, I see some nodding faces here uh, where, where the amount of data that needs to be managed is growing. And uh, well, that makes life very easy. All you need to do is hire a little army of, of DBAs and data engineers to, uh, to support all that and to actually make it happen. Um, and of course, everybody knows, I see smiling faces, everybody knows that's not the case. So from a data management perspective from the underlying data infrastructure perspective uh, Snowflake had uh, just press very it one specific button. let's try that button again Snowflake had a very specific uh, philosophy towards the architecture uh, that we that we wanted to implement because nothing is as easy as to, to take your data warehouse database uh, put it in a cloud environment and off you go mm. Not so. That's uh, that's also bringing all the limitations of your on-prem database to the cloud as well. And I mean, if the cloud is anything, it it's it's unlimited. Uh, therefore, we have started uh, to build a data warehouse specifically for the cloud. And what we wanted to actually go and do is uh, um, use it as if it's just another database. You know, like uh, like you've been doing for for decades now. Um, use it like it's any other database, like we've been doing for decades now. Uh, but uh, and this is a marketing slide. I always say that because there's probably marketing people in the room. Um, I'm a techie. Minimal management. <laughs> I see people smiling and nodding, going like, "Yeah, yeah, zero management." Minimal management. You know, uh, for the people who are used to uh, to uh, to using uh, databases, it's always interesting to know. Am I going to put this, uh, this data in separate tables or am I going to place them together? Am I going to flatten this structure or should it be, I don't know, a star schema? Yeah. That's the type of thing that you would be doing. And that's the kind of decisions that you instantly start to make. You do not start to make decisions around, oh, should I buy uh, an IBM box or a Dell box or an HP box for this? Because it's in the cloud, it's already there. All you need is a, a URL, a link to get to that database. Um, another interesting thing is when you think about relational databases, uh, if you think about SQL, you're thinking structured data. 
rows and columns. Uh, we said, well, you know what, uh, lately uh, big data is all about uh, much more than just the basic rows and columns. So we said, well, from the ingestion perspective, when we get data into the system, uh, we want that data to be, uh, to be potentially, uh, yeah, the term is often used, unstructured. I hate that term because it doesn't make sense. Every data has structure. Let's call it semi-structured. Semi think, think XML, think JSON, think documents, uh, these type of things. You would want the capability to ingest that data in the system as well. Uh, that also means that you would want to be able to support all of your users. And it's like all of your users, yeah, duh, of course you do. But think about it. Think about the environment where you would have your, uh, your, your, your data warehouse, basically, where you would have all your data available to both the data scientists who will be running, you know, from top left to bottom right queries uh, uh, looking for trends and outliers, uh, but the same database being used by your business intelligence users, your uh, marketing analysts saying, hey, uh, I have a very specific question about, uh, so what's this marketing action in the Excel today uh, have, have as a result, for example. Uh, what you would want to do is have those, uh, have everybody work on the very same data using the tools they are used to using, for example, SQL. And of course, the one on, the, on, the, on, on my far left, on the far right for you, we're in the cloud. So if we're not using the system, we don't want to pay for the system. And if we use the system a lot, then we, we're prepared to pay a lot for that system. You know, spin up, of, uh, spin up a data warehouse, think about it. Yeah, but that's really what Snowflake is all about. The data is there. All you need to do is spin up your warehouse uh, and, and get access to that data. And not just get access to the data, but get unlimited concurrent access to the data. Because if I want to uh, connect 100 users from, uh, from uh, the marketing department to that, uh, to that database in the cloud, I would spin up enough warehouses that use that same, uh, that same single source of the truth. So you're, you're, from a concurrency perspective, you're very limited. Basically, you're limited to what the cloud provider can, can supply you with. I'm not sure if, the, if anyone is going to hit that limitation in any, uh, uh, in, in, and not in my lifetime anyway. That's really, that's really the, the key things, what this is all about. And um, I, I, got, I, I was given two minutes, and if you let me, I'll talk for two days. Uh, these are the key, the key uh, um, uh, philosophies in the architecture of the underlying data management structure. So, so we have about five more minutes left. So we'll move on to the three use cases that our customers are asking us to cover. Um, I'll let Peter explain the first two, and then I'll do the uh, do Absolutely. the third. If that's Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'll I'll take I'll take this first one because this is around advanced data preparation. So you are basically, let's say, the data scientist, uh, making sure that uh, that that the data is bringing you value. Um, but where does that data go? So in this situation, you would have Cubo running in the cloud, uh, where all the, all the uh, artificial intelligence, the AI processing and, and, and uh, algorithms are running. Uh, you would have Snowflake, the, the virtual warehouse, running in the cloud, accessing its data, which in, in Amazon would live in S3, because that's the cheapest place to store your data. Um, Cubo would be uh, does have a direct interface based on the on the communications and the, uh, the cooperation that uh, uh, Cubo and Snowflake have, uh, getting data uh, from the system from the database, um, doing all kinds of data preparation, really based on again trends and outliers, uh, regressions, what have you, uh, and then pushing that pushing the results of those analysis, pushing that cleansed data, pushing. Uh, maybe only the, uh, the features that are relevant to a specific set of users uh, back to that same virtual warehouse. So that interface is really, a, it's a two-way interface. So it's for example, sorry to interrupt, so for example, sorry. this could be clickstream data, where you want to use uh, Apache Spark, as we have here, to kind of aggregate the data down and find the, you know, the, the more useful uh, information in the data. And then in this first example, you're preparing it and then pushing it back to Snowflake where you'd build your, your data warehouse. So do you want to go on to the next one?
So use case number two. So the first two use cases have you seen are around uh, data engineers, and then the third use case is going to be more for data science. So in the second use case, um, this is basically advanced data, data preparation on Snowflake and other data sources. So this, in this example, what's different is uh, Qbol in this case is taking the data from S3, assuming we're using Amazon uh, as our example. We're pulling the data into Qbol, um, doing some kind of first pass aggregation, some, some modeling maybe on the data, and then we're passing the data back to Snowflake where you do more of the data warehousing type stuff. Okay, and the third one? And then I'll just introduce the, the final one, then I'll hand over to, to Peter. So the third one, like I said, is more about the data scientist persona. So what you probably noticed here is we're trying to produce value for different personas. So whether it be a data engineer or a data scientist. Um, this one is more around the data scientist. Um, and what we're doing here, again, we have the data loading into Snowflake. And then uh, this is for uh, customers who want to do more advanced analytics on their data. So as Peter said, Snowflake is very good for kind of data warehousing business type of analytics. Um, this is much more for a data scientist. So they want to build models. They want to test models out. They maybe want to write a, a much more complex personalization engine um, or data ag aggregation engine. Um, and then they can do that because they're taking the data from uh, Snowflake. Peter, you just want to finish up? Great, everyone. So, so thank you for your time. Um, we do have time for questions or if anyone would like to, to come up at the end. Um, can I just do a quick show of hands in terms of who uses the cloud here? A few people. So great. Okay. So we're just trying to get a gauge because obviously we're all in, both companies are all in the cloud. Um, and I think it's important to see how people are adopting the cloud more. Um, so like we said, I uh, hope that was useful. Um, our booth is just outside here. Uh, the Snowflake booth is just next to us. Um, we have some of our technical guys here that can give you a demo of Kubel. And also Snowflake is showing you their product as well. So if there aren't any questions for now, uh, please feel free to, to come up and ask us. Does anyone have any questions just before we finish? Great. Okay, everyone, thank you for your time. Hope that was useful.